Hey friends around the world, welcome to Kingdom Insight. This is uh, Dr. Kazumba Charles. I want to share with you uh, 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 the word of God that is going to motivate you and to mold you into what God wants you to do and to be in the, in, in the, in the next season. But here is our title, Powerful Things God Wants You to Know so that you can make a difference and advance his kingdom. Powerful things that God wants you to know. You know, what kills us is what we don't know. And God has given us the word of God in order to give us the nuggets, to give us the platform, to give us the power and the weapon for us to stand on. Uh, I want to share this because uh, if you are to advance the kingdom of God, you got to know these things that God wants you to know. Uh, number one, one point, number the first point that God wants us to know, that he wants you to know is this. God has made you a king and a priest. Now, here's the most important point. Not for decorative purposes or so you can feel good about yourself, but for the demonstration of his kingship. Why has God made us kings and uh, priests? We got to understand the, the, the purpose of a priest and the purpose of a king. These are things that God wants you to realize that you are a king in the, king, in, 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 in the kingdom of God. And he has made you a, a priest. Yes, the only king of kings is Jesus Christ. But when you, when you realize that in this world God has made you a king and he has made you a priest, your mentality and the way you live your life and the way you do things changes. I want to take you to the book of Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 to 10. It says this, and they sang a new song, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, because you were slain, and by your blood you purchased, you got to understand that word, purchased for God those from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and you made them into a kingdom, priests, to do what? To serve our God and they will reign on earth. God wants you to rule and reign here on earth. That's why he has made you a king and a priest. But understand those terms, I've heard people who would say, I am a king's kid. But you got to understand it's not for decorative purposes. It's not a badge. It is for the purpose to serve in the kingdom of God. If you are not serving and if you don't understand these nuggets I'm giving you, it becomes very difficult to function in the power of God. Let me take you to another point here. Number two, that God wants you to know. Things that God wants you to know is this. Inside of you resides the fire of the Holy Spirit and the light of the glory of God that needs to burn brighter to the world so that people can see who? Jesus in you and Jesus through you. Now the problem that people are unable to see Jesus in our lives, the characteristics and the, the nature of Jesus in our lives is that we have opened up ourselves to influences that that, are not, that have got nothing to do with the word of God and that have got nothing to do with the kingdom of God. We got to come back and God wants you to know that inside of you, he has deposited the spirit of God in you to become all he wants you to be so that you can advance the kingdom of God. In the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 7 to 8, we see this. Here's Jesus replying. He says, it is not for you to know the times. Now, you got to understand here the disciples of Jesus Christ wants to know the time when the end will come. And many people are consumed around the world. They see the calamity that is happening. We are consumed to say the world is coming to an end right away. But here's what Jesus is saying to his disciples. Don't worry. In fact, I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit don't worry about the seasons that the father has fixed 
because you and me cannot change them. The Father has fixed them by his own what? Authority. But you will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now here's what he's saying. I'll paraphrase again. Before you become my witnesses in where? In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, you will receive power. Meaning inside of you, God has put the Spirit, His own breath, His own power, so that you can advance the kingdom of God. Look, you look at yourself, you think you are worthless because people have told you so. You think you've got nothing because people have looked at you like that. But God is saying, inside of you, I have put what? I have put my spirit. I have put my spirit. Let, let me put it this way. In a vehicle, when there is a vehicle without gasoline, that vehicle won't start. You can go and try to twist it. You can push it. You can do anything. It won't start. But when you put the gasoline, the fuel, in the vehicle, the vehicle will automatically start just like that. Why? Because there is, a, there is the fuel that is in that, in, in, that, uh, in that vehicle. That will make the vehicle to start. The Holy Spirit is the vehicle of the power of God that God has invested in you to make you be effective in that which he has called you, in the gift he has placed upon you. Number three, let's look at number three, things Powerful things that God wants you to know. Here it is. Here's number three. There isn't anything humble about not doing what God has commissioned you to do. God wants you to know that it's not humility if you can't do what he has told you to do. It's not humility if you can't be what he has called you to be. Here, there isn't anything humble about not doing what God has commissioned you to be. To set aside God's will to appease our others is false humility. I hear people, well, can you do this for God? No, uh, uh, because uh, they, 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 they are afraid they'll be looked at as if they are prideful. Listen, there isn't anything humble about not doing what God has called you. That is false humility. False humility. It's a lie from the devil. Here's John chapter 12 verse 43. It says this, for they loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. Many people are waiting for man to approve them so that they can do what God has called them to do. It is, a, it is a big lie. Yes, we need people to come alongside us to say, I see greatness in you. I see the power of God in you. I see the spirit of God in you. Go, go, go. But if there is nobody coming alongside you to tell you that, you don't have to worry. You just have to rise up. Why? You understand you have been made a king. You have been made a priest. You have been made what? A, uh, inside of you, there is the Holy Spirit in you. And when you realize the Spirit of God in you, you begin to know that God has called you for something special in this life. You are not just a number in this world. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. For am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I, would be, I, I wouldn't be a bond servant of Christ. Here is Paul saying, look, if I wanted to just please men, it's easy because if I please men, uh, they are not going to reject me. If I please men, they are not going to say anything bad about me. If I please men, I, I, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be accepted by certain people. But look, pleasing God and pleasing man is not the same thing. And God wants you to know there is no nothing humble about you not doing what he has called you to do number four as we look at these uh, powerful things that God wants you to know here is our, our fourth point humility is responding to the word of God by doing what it says you are to do out of love for God and the people as well as the consideration for others that is true humility. Humility is to respond to what God has called you to do. Not to respond to the fears, the rejection of man. You respond to the word of God. Here is Luke chapter 6, 46. What does it say? Jesus is telling his disciples, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? 
Humility is actually doing what Jesus has said. What has Jesus spoken in your life? What has God called you to do? What is it that God has put in your life? If you are sitting over the gift that God has given you and you call yourself humble, I want to tell you those are the devil's lies because God is looking for a people that are going to rise up in within their gift and function in the church and outside the church so that the glorious power of the kingdom of God can reign and rule here on earth. I want to take you to James chapter 1, verse 21 to 23. Here's what it says. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and every expression of evil and humbly receive the word planted in you which can save your soul. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Otherwise, you are deceiving yourself. For anyone who hears the word but does not carry it out is like a man who looks at his first in a mirror and after observing himself goes away and immediately forgets what it looks like. A lot of people around the world, they would rather talk about what they can do. They would rather talk about what God has called them to do, but they find it very difficult to step out and actually do it. We talk about revival and God is talking about you being the revival. We talk about about being, you know, uh, sharing the gospel of, 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 of the word of God to the nations. And God is saying, I want you to be that nation that, that, that is consumed with the word of God. You know, it's easy to talk. Talk is cheap. That's why many people, it's very easy to step out to share the gospel, to step out and be what they are called to be. Because in this world, as long as you begin to do what God has called you, you are going to be rejected. You are going to be called names. People are going to say things that are nasty. But you got to understand, as long as you are preaching the word of God, as long as you are realizing the spirit of God is leading you, as long as you have the consideration for others and you are doing it in love, in humility, and the humility I'm talking about is responding to the word of God and be a blessing to others. You don't have to worry about nothing. God shall provide. You don't have to win man's favor because God will be on your side. When God calls you, he does what he wants you to do. Many people will, 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 will call you names and that's how the enemy does to do what, to neutralize what God wants you to do. I want to share the fifth point of the powerful things that God wants you to know so that you can advance his kingdom. Stay Step out of your gift. Realize you have the power of God in you through the Holy Spirit that God has invested in you. Uh, the, 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 the fifth point that God wants you to know is this. Sitting and doing nothing or saying nothing isn't humility at all. You think people are just quiet for some of us who are talkative. And I talk, I'm thankful for the gift that God has given you, has given me. But you know, we think of people that are talkative, we think as if they are proud. And God wants you to know this. Sitting and doing nothing or saying nothing isn't humility at all. It is a destroyer of the destiny of God that is in you. Let me take you to Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. Here's what it says. Then I said, Oh Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a youth. But the Lord said to Jeremiah, Do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go. And all that I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Now here's the thing. Why keep quiet if it's God who has given you the word? Yeah, keep quiet if you don't have anything to say. Keep quiet if the spirit of God is not saying anything. It's good actually. It's wise. It's wisdom. If you don't have nothing to say, keep quiet but here's the problem here if you don't say that which God has shown you through the dream through the vision through his plans through the word of God then we have a problem here that is not humility that is a destroyer of the kingdom of God in your life I, I, I want you to know that God wants you to rise up he wants you to rise up he wants you to understand that he's calling you to something greater something special I want to show you the number six point here's our six point here 
if you don't fight for your destiny, no one will fight you, will fight for you. God wants you to know this. If you sit down and don't fight for the destiny that he has called you to. Now, I'm not talking about selfishness here for me to just live for myself. A person who has been consumed with the word of God lives by the standard of the word of God. I love because I understand the word of God. I forgive because I understand the word of God. And why? So you got to understand that if you don't fight for your destiny, no one is going to fight for you. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, he this he will also reap. You got to understand. If you sow fear, you're going to reap fear. If you sow laziness, pass passivity, apathy, that is how your life will turn out. If you sow strength through the word of God, if you sow stability, dedication, and passion, guess what God does? God is going to give you the rewards of that, and you. Use you mightly. What you sow into your life is what you reap. you saying, I want to change my life. I want to be a man or a woman of the kingdom of God, a man with a passion for God. Let me tell you one thing. You got to start reading the word of God. You got to start now realizing what God has given to you. That's why God wants you to know these points so that you can do what you can be or he has called you to be. Number seven. Here's our seventh point. When you know what you want in life and know that the God of all power and strength is with you, no criticism, opposition, or negative words can stop you. God wants you to know that. He wants you to know what he knows through his word. And here's the, the point. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 1 to 53 there. There we see the account of David. It's an interesting account. David knows something. He knows about the power of God. He knows how powerful God has delivered him from uh, bears and lions as he tended to his father's sheep. And then uh, here for, 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 for 40 days, Goliath was taunting the nation of Israel. And the army that was trained to, to confront, you know, Goliath were stuck. They couldn't do nothing about it. David knew something. He knew that victory comes from the power of God. Victory comes by upholding the name of God. So he goes to the battle line, and what does he say? He begins to inquire, what will the man who, who kills this giant be given if he kills this giant? Now, look at this story. Uh, the highlight of the story is the brothers of David. What do they do? They begin to slander him. They begin to criticize him. They begin to do what to oppose him. You are just full of pride, you young man. Go and tend to daddy's ship. But David didn't quit right there. Why? He knew something they didn't know. He knew something. That's why he was trying to inquire. And we know the story. What happens? David goes. He defeats Goliath. He didn't allow criticism to stop him. He didn't allow opposition to stop him. He didn't allow the things that were falling apart to, oh, to stop him. He stood the ground because he knew what he knew and that, that he knew the power of God. God wants you to know his power. God wants you to know the power that is in his word. God wants you to know the power that is in the Holy Spirit. God wants you to know the power that he has invested in you by the indwelling spirit of God. The number eight points I want to share with you is this. This is what God wants you to know. As long as your intention is to bring glory to the name of God, help others, uh, build up the body of Christ, you should never be discouraged by any storms of life that come in the form of uh, criticism, resistance, rejection, and hostility. You must fight all these things to reach the destiny that God has called you to reach. Let me tell you this. People will not see what God uh, uh, has put in you because when God calls you, he doesn't send a memo to everybody to say, this is my only Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, God had to send the memo from heaven to say, this is my child in whom I am well 
well pleased. But you know, when God calls you to do something, he doesn't send a memo. That's why people will call you useless. That's why people will reject you. They will criticize you. They can't understand the plan of God. But you've got to put it in your mind. As long as your intention is to bring glory to the name of God, to help others, to, 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 to build up the body of Christ, you must never bow to the power of criticism. You must never bow to the power of opposition because that is the schemes of the devil to try and stop what God wants you to do in your life. Look at our first Peter chapter 4 verse 1. If anyone speaks, he should speak as one conveying the words of God. If anyone serves, he should serve with the strength God supplies so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory and the power forever and ever. If you serve, serve in the strength of God. If you speak, speak the words of God and speak the words of God and that's what God wants us to do. Look at uh, Luke chapter 6 verse 22. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they, they exclude you and insult you and reject you, your name as evil because of the Son of Man. I want to stop right there. If people reject you because you are not living according to the Word of God, then we got a problem. But if they reject you because you are upholding the name of God, you are sharing the good news of the kingdom of God, you are sharing the power of the kingdom of God, you don't have to lose your faith. You don't have to crumble. You don't have to cry. Why? The God who called you is going to stand with you in your battle. Point number nine as we wind up here. Look at this. Uh, don't be scared to step out of your comfort zone. Why? Because if you are scared to step out of a comfort zone, you will never do anything for the kingdom of God. Look, you are afraid to do something. You are afraid to fail. You are People fail to step out of their comfort zone because they are scared they're going to fail in life. Hey, show me a person who has never failed before. I will show you a person who has never tried anything new. Show me a person who has never done anything greater for the kingdom of God. I will show you a person who is scared, scared to criti because of criticism, scared because of uh, people's objection. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, here, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. As long as God is with you, as long as you are in God, you don't have to be afraid, you don't have to get scared, you don't have to get worried. As long as your motives are to uplift the name of God, you should be delighted when they hate you, you should be delighted when they cast you aside. Why? Because you are bringing glory to the name of of God. You are building up the community of the believers of God. I want to share the 10th point uh, uh, with you here. Courage does not come by listening to negative, fearful, and timid people. If you want to have courage to step out, out of your comfort zone, you don't have to continue to listen to fearful, timid, negative people. People who have no mind for the kingdom of God. People who don't want to do nothing for the kingdom of God. Courage comes by listening to courageous people. Second Chronicles chapter 28 verse 20 here. here. Listen to this. Here is David sharing this with his son. Then, he, then David said to his son Solomon, be strong and courageous and do, do the work. Don't be afraid. Oh, discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you, and he won't leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the Lord's house is uh, finished. You've got to understand that Cara having courage or courageous people, they listen to courageous people. Find a man full of the word of God. Find a people that knows what God's word is saying. Find people who not only know the word of God, but are able to function in the word of God. It's one thing to know about the word of God. It's another thing to function in the word of God.
Numbers chapter 13 verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people in the presence of Moses and said, We must go up and take possession of the land because we can certainly conquer it. What was happening here? Uh, Caleb and Joshua just came, came back to give uh, a report after they went to spy the land. And uh, the, the other spies said, uh, Oh, there are giants there. But Caleb, Caleb and, uh, and, and Joshua, the, to them it was a different thing. They said, Oh man, we can go and take this land they were courageous they were full of faith and yet courageous people don't listen to people who are intimidated even by the small thing uh, uh, the number 11 point i want to share with you here is this God wants you to know that your testimony is crucial because your testimony, it tells the enemy or it speaks to the enemy about the powerful, about, about the power of God and, uh, and, uh, and, and how it can turn your mess into a message, your test into a testimony and your tribulation into a great triumph. God wants you to know that the testimony that is in you is very crucial because it can tell the enemy that God is capable, God is powerful enough to turn your mercy into a message and your test into a testimony and your tribulation into a great triumph. Look at the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 33. And with great power, the apostles, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And great grace was upon them. With power, they gave what? Their testimony. What testimony? About what God is able to do. About the resurrected Jesus, the resurrected Messiah, the powerful and only Jesus Christ. Do you have a testimony? What is your testimony? What are you testifying to? Are you testifying? Uh, to fear? Are you testifying to criticism? Are you testifying to all that man is saying against you? I want you to know this. In you, God has put the ability through the Holy Spirit to stand up the test of time and to know that your God is with you and he wants to do something special in your life. Don't give up. Don't give in. Stand on the ground. Stand with the power of God. I will continue this segment, uh, this series of uh, Thing, things that God wants you to know so that you can advance his kingdom. Step out of your comfort zone, comfort zone and be all that he has called you to be. What has the enemy done to you? Is he trying to, to steal what God has, 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 has spoken in your life? Right now on this program, I break that spirit. I break the spirit of fear. I break the spirit of intimidation. I break the spirit of rejection out of your life. And I speak courage in you, in Jesus' name. I'm so thankful uh, that you are able to join with me. I, I want you to join with us in our second segment as we talk about uh, powerful things that God wants you to know. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. Please write to us, life at kazumbachars.com. We are excited and we are excited to bring to you the word of God with passion. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. Hello friends around the world, thank you uh, for all your support, your prayers. This is uh, Dr. Kazumba Charles and my wife, Glory Kazumba. Uh, we have purposed in our heart to be a blessing.